So I work with uh, bacteria that cause serious diseases in humans and because they cause serious diseases you have to handle them in laboratories that ensure there's no possibility of the release of those bacteria from the laboratory into the environment. The other area I work in is in vaccines and in particular um, in vaccines against bacterial diseases and, and vaccines that could be used to um, immunize the population and in some cases it's really important that those vaccines never get released and never survive outside of the, the human body. So generally in microbiology we rely on physical um, barriers to ensure biocontainment and those physical measures are, are designed to prevent release of microorganisms into the environment. Um, obviously for vaccines it's a little bit more difficult because it's quite difficult to control exactly where a vaccine goes after you give it to somebody and, and so that is a big challenge, a big challenge for the community to think about how you, how you ensure vaccines remain only in the person that you give it to. An ideal system would be triggered by some something that's present in the environment but not in the niche you're trying to contain the microorganism within and of course that's the challenge the challenge is thinking about what would that unique trigger be um, and, and that's where the elegance of the solution is going to lie I mean I think realistically it's going to have to be a, a genetically determined biocontainment system to be workable and to be tunable and, and, and to our precise purposes and I can see lots of applications for kill switches. My definition of kill switch would be a switch that ensures that if the bacterium encounters a particular environment it triggers lethality. So very rapidly that bacterium is killed. I think it's a very very neat idea and um, I, you know it's one of those ideas which in theory it, it's very elegant but actually making it work in practice, making it work reliably is, is obviously where the challenge is. Our, our containment measures are predicated on a risk assessment so what we do is think about the consequences and there are bound to be some, some events that you wouldn't want to happen and we don't not always know what the consequences of that will be so although we can carry out a risk assessment based on the DNA that's that's been inserted into the GMO you know at another level you might argue we don't really want any genetically modified information out there in the wider environment because I think there is not there isn't a black and white answer to this there, there is no this is not a zero risk activity on the other hand, there are massive benefits that, that might be realised from GMOs. And I think the public need to, in the same way as the public make decisions on all sorts of other risk-benefit issues, they need to, to be involved in this debate around the risks and benefits of using GMOs. Um, and, and so that's really the only way I can see of moving us forward is to, you know, is to educate the public a bit more about the issues. Mm -hmm.